Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I want to welcome you to the special meeting on June 18th, 2012 for several items plus our, uh, our budget for 2013, uh, 2012, tw uh, 2013. Uh, this time, Chief. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council Members, City Manager, and members of the audience both present here and at home. It is with great pleasure that I stand before you again tonight to give you another example of what fine men and women serve this city and specifically the Public Safety Department. I'd like to share with you this example in the case of PSO Public Safety Officer Felicia Ennis and Sergeant Brian Christie to provide you with greater details of the caliber of these two fine people, specifically Officer Ennis. I'd like to ask Captain Carl Walden to step forward, please. Thank you, Chief. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an uh, employee award nomination for the Distinguished Service Citation for Valor. On May the 1st, 2012, Public Safety Officer Felicia Ennis donated one of her kidneys to Public Safety Officer Sergeant Brian Christie. Sergeant Christie had developed a kidney disease that left him with limited use of both kidneys. Sergeant Christie was still able to maintain his full work status but undergoing nine hours of dialysis every night at home. Sergeant Christie maintained a positive attitude during this time despite the toll it took on him physically and emotionally and his family. He knew his time was limited and that his health was in jeopardy each day. Sergeant Christie was informed by his medical advisors that a kidney transplant would be the best option for his extended health and higher quality of life. He was placed on a kidney transplant list with hopes of someday having a donor. Before I continue, I'd like for both those officers to stand up here with me, if they would. Public Safety Officer Felicia Ennis, knowing that Sergeant Christie needed a kidney donor, advised him that she'd be willing to be tested for a match. She and Sergeant Christie made several tri trips to the UNC Hospital at Chapel Hill, North Carolina, where they both underwent vigorous testing and it took several days. It was determined that Felicia was a match. On May the 1st, 2012, at the UNC Hospital in Chapel Hill, PSO Felicia Ennis donated one of her kidneys to Sergeant Brian Christie. The results were prayers answered. On Friday, May the 4th, just four days after the operation, both were allowed to return home. Sergeant Christie now has a healthy working kidney and no longer has to undergo dialysis for nine hours every night. Most acts of valor are one-time events that might have little or no effect on those performing this act once it's completed. PSO Ennis' act placed her life in jeopardy during the operation and has the potential to place it in jeopardy every day for the rest of her life. Her act of valor is repeated each day. I present PSO Ennis and Sergeant Christie. Take your time. I'm sorry. That's all right. It's all right. Um, I have a few words that uh, I prepared, and by no means is it professional grade, but um, I felt like it was important. Um, to Chief Talbert, Major Bradshaw, Major Rector, and members of the city's governing body. Hello and thank you for your time and attendance this evening. 
Now before I get started, I would like all of you to look behind me. Those folks are my natural family, <clears throat> all of them. A couple of them couldn't make it this evening, but I know beyond a shadow of a doubt they would be here if they were still here with us in person. Now I'd like for you to look around to the public safety members that are here. Those folks are my other family. The ones who share with me the willingness to protect and serve this city. The ones who watch over you and your families day in and day out, 24-7, 365. This award fills me with emotion that I cannot express. It is truly an honor to be presented with this and I cannot say thank you enough and how thankful I am to be able to be a part of this. Now some of you who don't know me may ask why. Why would I take the initiative to go through a process to see if I were an eligible candidate to donate a kidney? Well, if you have the time, I will tell you why. Three years ago in August, my daddy had an appointment with a surgeon. During the appointment, it was related that my daddy was diagnosed with colon cancer. The feeling I had in the pit of my stomach was sickening. However familiar, since just a year prior, I had lost my grandmother to lung, lung cancer. So I'm sure you can imagine hearing the word cancer, I'd already given my daddy a death sentence. Well, time passed and my daddy had surgery. The doctors related they had gotten all of the tumor and they did not progress into any lymph nodes or anywhere else for that matter. My daddy got to come home and recovery was slow but very successful. Treatment options were discussed by us as a family and encouraged by, my, by the doctors. However, my daddy was having no part in it. I questioned why, and he would reassure me that it would be taken care of. Well, to make a long story short, it was taken care of. My daddy is cancer-free today with no chemo treatments and no radiation. Now I said all of that to say this. I know what it is like to think your daddy is going to die and to feel like there is nothing you can do about it. You feel helpless with a lot of questions and doubt. Could you imagine being a four-year-old and not knowing if you were going to have to grow up without your daddy? This certain little boy adores his daddy and vice versa. Could you imagine being a father not knowing if you were going to live long enough to watch your son grow and to teach him how to shoot a gun or how to pass a baseball or often wonder what your son may look like when he becomes a young man. As I thought about these things with Brian, I thought about his family, what they would miss out on, what his son would miss out on. My daddy taught me all of those things, and he even got to see me grow up. After careful thought and consideration, my feelings of helplessness from when my daddy was sick all of a sudden turned into, hey, well, maybe I can help somebody's daddy. The thought that was left in my heart and in my mind was that my daddy was cured and left here for me and my family. What if I could help Adam? What if I could give Brian more time with his little boy and family? Now I know the decision was not entirely up to me for, the, for this to be a success. <clears throat> I know there were prayers prayed by lots and lots of people that the ultimate decision was left to God himself. However, my prayers However, my prayer was, God, you spared my daddy. If it be your will, allow me to be a match for Brian. God, use my kidney to be a help to someone else and their family. Well, months passed. I completed the necessary paperwork and the testing procedures began. Everything was going well. My transplant coordinator related that our blood types were compatible. We were both A positive, so I thought, why wouldn't it work? More tests came along with the positive results. I was becoming anxious and excited, ready to do this all at the same time. Brian, well, Brian was getting excited, but I believe somewhere in the back of his mind there was a question, a question of, is this really going to happen for me? Well, the results from the last round of tests were complete, and yes. I got the call and was informed that I was healthy and I was compatible to give my kidney to Brian. My transplant coordinator even told me that we were as close a match as we could get. 
without being blood relatives. I know who arranged that. My transplant coordinator related on a scale of one to six, Brian and I were a 5.5. My prayers were answered along with many other people's. Our surgery date was scheduled for May 1st. Seven weeks ago tomorrow, I gave Brian Christie my left kidney. I did not give him life. However, I was a helper in prolonging his life that God had given him. It has been a slow and careful recovery for the both of us. And you ask me today if I regret doing it. Not at all. I would do it all over again if the need were there. Every pain and every ache I have had, it has all been well worth it to me. To see one more daddy spared and to enable him to grow old with his children, his natural family, and with us at work, his other family. Thank you once again for your time. stand there and I want the council to and all of us here will walk through and shake mm -hmm. y'all's hand and come around yes, sir. okay Felicia, after a speech like that, I have no words other than I admire both of you, and particularly I admire you. Thank and you, Mr. Lane. My belief in public safety has always been there, but this solidifies it. Thank you, sir. We appreciate Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll give the family and time. Anybody else want to say anything? <laughs> Brian, you want to say anything? You're welcome. Okay. Chief, you need to say anything? Okay. I just simply add to this that we were here two weeks ago talking about you know a, a CPR resuscitation and how it, this just augments all the more and, and reminds us again that public service is about caring for your brother, whether it's out on the street or whether it's the person that works next to you, comes to work with you on a daily, nightly basis, whatever the case may be. And I think these two folks epitomize what we talk about with public service it gets lost all too often that above and beyond becomes somewhat of a cliche uh, this I think redefines that above and beyond without a doubt makes me uh, very proud to be an elected official in the city of Morganton thank you sir. thank y'all God bless you thank and you. we'll give y'all time to leave if y'all would like thank you with the public hearing I'll open up to consider the city of Morganton budget for the fiscal year 2012-2013 Sally mm -hmm. um.
at our June earlier June meeting we went through the details of the budget it is a 65.7 million dollar budget for next year um, the budget does include um, continuing the same services as we provide those today does include in it a tax rate increase from 46 cents to 48 cents per hundred dollar value and leaving the municipal service tax rate the same at 14 cents per hundred dollars of value you have included in your packet um, the budget ordinance I can tell you that the meeting was properly advertised and we did um, publish the publisher's affidavit the bu budget affidavit to um, comply with the law so we are in accordance with that I am happy to answer any questions or try to clarify anything but I think we went into considerable detail at the last meeting okay anyone wishing to speak for or against the budget close the public hearing council I move we accept the <coughs> budget ordinance for fiscal year 2012-2013. Second. Okay, we have a motion, second. Any discussion? All right, I want to make some comments. So let me forget we've got a motion and a second. <coughs> I want to mention some uh, positive notes, and I'll give you all a copy of this when I'm through, uh, gentlemen of the city council. Some positive notes that you can think about and you can talk to your citizens about it as you go in your daily activities. But um, a lot of cases, uh, the people that we deal with on a daily basis sometimes can pick the uh, most sensitive and, and possibly negative. I hope that's not the case. But uh, there's so many positive things when we were uh, talking with department heads about uh, issue in different items and I'm going to I'm going to read them and mention to you I'm not doing them by memory by heart public safety our public safety concept saves our taxpayers approximately two million dollars every year the public safety department managed last year's budget with less than five thousand dollars spent in overtime pay the public safety department wrote the seven million dollars plus grant to build a countywide 9-11 facility a PSAP facility our public safety department wrote grants for hundred and sixty five thousand dollars to purchase Viper radios sniper rifles camera systems and 14 sets of turnout gear that was in public safety not counting what we heard last week last month I'm sorry well two weeks ago uh, when the officers saved a lady's life out on College Street and then what happened today I mean, these are these are positive things that uh, that you don't see other towns happen in other towns. In public works, the management of the department responsibilities with reduced budget and personnel, and Scott has done an uh, admirable job in doing that, and he does it every year. The tasks there are accomplished in large part through careful management and interdepartmental and intra-departmental teamwork. An example of the project is the concrete work at the rear entrance to the Clinton Faust Recreation Center. And Scott's department also received and managed federal energy conservation grant in the amount of $118,000, coordinated an interdepartmental city match to make uh, lighting, HVAC, and insulation improvements to municipal bu buildings. The project should save the city over $30,000 in energy expenses. Electric. Securing the new Morganton Heights shopping center for our electric system, which is a unbelievable accomplishment considering that we were up against Duke Power. Being selected as the Reliable Power 3 recipient again, recognizing the city of Morganton as one of the most reliable, efficient, and safest municipal electric system in the country, not in, not in the state, but in the country. We can boast that the Morganton electric system is 99.9% .9 reliable. Work with local industry, Ekronis, Burke County Building, out on uh, Coast, uh, Wamsetta Mill Road, and Gershenheimer on energy efficient grants. Viscotec, the largest solar energy setup of a public power in the state of North Carolina. Have had 12 years 
of wholesale rate increases, we used rate stabilization to absorb eight of those 12 years. People tend to forget. I remember them because I was sitting on the city council where each year we had a rate increase from the power agency and we didn't pass it on to our, our customers in eight of those uh, years. We absorbed it. Main Street, the recruitment and expansion of many businesses, to be exact, 18 new businesses, 65 new and part-time jobs, record crowd at the 30th Annual Historic Festival, record crowd at TGIF concerts, averaging about 1,800 people per night and going on as we speak last Friday night, cleaned up and redesigned two alleys in downtown Morganton with the help of, re of the Development and Design Department and North Carolina Department of Transportation. Beautiful new traffic commerce in downtown with the help of development and design, public works, and uh, North Carolina Department of Transportation. Highly successful farmer's market. If you haven't been, you're missing something. It's where people meet. Uh, we have two of them. We have Wednesday from 2 to 6 on the corner of Green and Avery, and on Saturdays from uh, 8 to 12 at the depot. First ever sculpture in downtown Morganton installed with gift money. Information Resources Department, inspired to fix it only if it breaks, an attitude. That's our attitude in that department. Still using servers and IT equipment for, that are over seven years old. Recreation, over one million people went to Catawba Meadows in the last year. Not just softball and baseball, but disc golf events, red, white, and bluegrass festival and other events. Partnership with Gerara and the Over a Mountain Victory Trail, art in the park, motorcycle rallies, gospel concerts, and more. Finish the second set of soccer fields. Comma, saved over $1,500 a month on utility bills by the new heat and air controls. The early campaign to sign up season ticket renewals for the season 2013, 12 and 2013 season left us with only 15% of the ticket holders that we had to contact. Compass negotiated the lowest rates granted to any cable operator in the designated market area for the retransmission consent agreements that took effect on January 1, 2012. And we have to do it every three years, and Bill does that on the telephone with these people. In the past 18 months, Compass has gained 414 telephone customers and 103 Internet customers. With the help of the city staff and our lobbyists in Raleigh, we were able to get Compass grandfathered by the North Carolina General Assembly when ultimately other towns were prohibited from getting into the business of cable, internet, and telephone. Today, we have a debt-free, state-of-the-art system serving customers in Morganton. Finance. Once again, we received the National Award for Professional and Responsive Financial Reporting, working with a smaller staff in that department and streamlining duties of each employee. Development and Design. Working daily with pre-construction pre issues for the new Walmart Center. Provided small business loans to allow seven local companies to grow or open, including Root & Vine, Lavis Group, Carolina Mist Winery, CBS Sports, Franchise Freight Trucking, Toner Machining, and James Tool. Continued working with Main Street and Burke Travel and Tourism on Nature's Playground branding. Efforts to promote tourism in Burke County. Retained $7 million in retirement development project within the uh, redevelopment area, East Union Street. Awarded the National Park Service headquarters for Over Mountain Victory National Historic Trail and Visitor Center. Water resources, one of about 100 communities that will get a 2% financing on $7 million to rebuild a portion of our waste treatment facility. Our project scored the highest points in the statewide competitive process managed by the Department of Environment and National, Natural Resources. <coughs> These are many things, and there are others that we just, I didn't want to be up here all night because I didn't think you'd want to be up here all night, but I want you to, Councilman, take these sheets with you, and when you have a bad day, <laughs> you think about what this city has been doing and what the department heads are doing, and we greatly appreciate uh, all of their effort to make Morganton a better place for all of our citizens to live, work, and play. Thank you. Uh, and the employees. And the employees, yeah. Department heads and employees. Uh, now, we have a motion. We have a second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 
Okay, the budget for 2012-13 is passed. Consideration of adoption of schedule of fees and charges, Sally. Um, the schedule of fees and charges, you have a copy. Those are the schedule of fees and charges that make up the numbers in the budget that you just passed. So each year you have to re-adopt that. Ask that you consider that now. I move we amend the public schedule of fees and charges as recommended by the city staff. Sorry. We have a motion. We have a second. Any discussion of the fees and uh, schedule of charges? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Um, consideration of, that's what we've already done that. Yeah. Consideration of year-end budget amendments, Sally, for 2011-12. Mm -hmm. For the current fiscal year, each year, um, we take a look and do a, a really a technical kind of budget amendment, cleaning up some things at the end of the year. The budget amendment you have before you tonight is $102,000 in the general fund. <laughs> Uh, you will note that that is, is a very small amount in an $18 million fund. Um, it has to do with some timing issues on the Main Street grant we had received last year and some part-time salaries and some food supply costs at the community house. That total is $102,000. You have a second budget amendment before you, and that's for our entitlement funds. And we have obviously the small business loan program in that and when we receive back payments that's considered program income we need to do a budget amendment amount of forty thousand dollars to receive that income to allow us to then reloan that out for other small business loans and i need you to do those in two separate motions please Move to approve the uh, budget amendment uh, second ever have a motion second any uh, discussion of that is that one for the general fund? General fund. fund. General fund. Okay. Have a motion, second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, and the next one. The next one would be the CDBG entitlement, the $40,000 one. So move. Second. Okay, motion, second. Discussion of that item. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Uh, before I move on, I uh, just want to mention two things. I know it's a special meeting, but uh, today um, the uh, San Juan chapter of the Colonial Dames uh, in the 17th century, and uh, they put a marker out at the Jora uh, area out on uh, Henderson Mill Road. Uh, a great service. I had a couple of hundred people, uh, the young people that worked in the dig, and, uh, and I have to take my hat off to Dub Hoard. Uh, Dub has spent eight years, eight summers out there working on the dig, and uh, uh, he looks like he's 18 years old uh, <laughs> instead of a great University of North Carolina former football player. Uh, but anyway, uh, that was a great uh, morning, and um, there were a lot of dignitaries from all over the state there, uh, and I just want to commend them and look forward to working with them at the Catawba Meadows as well as at the Henderson Mill Road. The other thing is that uh, I don't know whether you've heard, guys, but we um, I know Michael McNally has out in the audience about the uh, uh, the controlled burn that there are fire that they're going to have at the uh, 16,000 acres in uh, Grandfather. I'm sorry, in the uh, Linville Gorge area. Uh, got wind of it from former manager Mike Crock uh, last week or this early this week. No, last week. And we've made contacts with all, both senators, uh, U.S. senators and uh, House representatives, as well as uh, uh, our uh, representatives in Raleigh and Senator in Raleigh. And my phone has been burned up uh, today from Senator Hagan. Uh, and also, finally, it, it, as I walked in here, I got a call from the, the ranger up in Nebo. So uh, we're going to be uh, hearing a lot about that, but that's a controlled burn and it will be within the next 24 months, we think. But we hope there'll be more education about it as we go. Uh, okay, next item is uh, uh, consideration of approval of an amendment to the privilege license ordinance to allow for billing on a gross receipts methodology. Sally. Mm -hmm. um, in the budget that you just passed, there are $67,000 of expected revenues included. Um, in consideration of amending the privilege license ordinance and allowing the staff to bill those based on gross receipts as opposed to a flat fee charge. 
Um, this is something that we looked at a year and a half ago. At that time, the decision was made to not move forward with it. Since that time, the city staff has been able to work with the citizens group that looked into this. You have seen recommendations. Last year, you chose not to do those recommendations at that time to look at it further and see what other places were doing. You did that. And so presented to you tonight is the opportunity to begin with the July 1st billing. Billing privilege licenses based on a gross receipts method. Okay. So I'll make the motion to adopt an ordinance amending the privilege license tax ordinance to provide for taxes to be levied on the basis of gross receipts for certain businesses and further amending and modernizing the ordinance. Second. We have the motion. We have a second. Uh, any discussion? Been discussed till it doesn't have any hair on it. <laughs> yes, sir. Come, uh, come over to the uh, microphone. State your name and where you reside, if you would, sir. <laughs> I'm Roger Lane. I don't live in Morgan, but I live in the county. I got a business down on, on uh, Sterling Street that was Officer Brewster Antiques. Uh, what kind of percentage rates are you basing you? you uh, gross receipt deal on what kind of percentage you going to charge um there are two different categories for gross receipts the first category is retail merchants and services there is an exemption for five million dollars the first five million dollars will be billed at a hundred dollars and then <coughs> anything over five million gets calculated on a formula at 60 cents per thousand well, you're looking at what about, you know, last year it was discussed about the flea market deal and uh -huh. my business too because I ran out people. I Un understand. Can, can I tell you about that? Okay. Um, that is considered a specialty flea market vendor's permit, and that is $40, unless I'm mistaken. Lamina can correct words, me. that's not going to change. That is $40. So after last year, you lost a bunch at the flea market. I know that. And I lost some dealers at the shop on account of it, but... I don't know how much actual money you've lost or gained or whatever back since then, but I know you lost quite a few dealers from the flea market. At the $40? At the $40. I know a bunch of people that left and didn't go back. I had some leave my shop on account of it. That, or, you know, antiques is what I deal with, and uh, it's basically a hobby for the people that's in there. Okay, they're not in there to make a killing. Uh, my best dealer sold last year a total gross of ten thousand dollars that's one dealer and some of them didn't make nowhere near that it's just what just something for them to do because they're most of them's over 50 years old i got one that's under 40. but uh, flea market people are just trying to do whatever they can do to make money to try to help make ends meet gas food whatever but uh, as long as it don't change we're we good on that but uh you know, it's kind of iffy in some places to, like a business like I got, or flea market either one, because you get to messing with people that's barely making ends meet. Mine, I don't worry about mine. I pay $200 a year. That's no big deal. <laughs> Thank like you I for told being you last year, so Thank you. And I appreciate unless it. Unless the state does is something that we don't know about at this point, because there's they're looking at privileged licenses, trying to streamline them. So, uh, but we don't know, and, yeah. and hopefully they'll go home before they do anything. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, you should be you should be all right for a while. Yeah, it's like you know, last year, uh, I think I called a lot of cities. I gave y'all a list, of whatever of cities I called, and uh, apparently you did a little bit of work this year. You did more than you did last year. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. We have a motion. We have a second. Anyone else wishing to speak for or against? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Consideration of technical assistance services in the operation of the City of Morganton Geographic uh, uh, Information System, the GIS system, Sally. Mm -hmm. This is an annual contract. Um, the GIS system, you know, we receive technical assistance from the Western Piedmont Council of Government for doing this, and this is the contract that allows us to do that. Um, it will be the one that begins with July 1st, and it is the amount of $70,776 for the year, or $5,898 a month. 
And that's included in the budget that you just passed. Okay. Make a motion to approve an agreement between the Western Piedmont Council of Governments <laughs> and the City of Morganton for the provision of technical assistance services in the operation of the City of Morganton's Geographic Information System, the GIS, for the period of July 1, 2012 to June 30, 2013. Second. We have a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Uh, consideration of approval of the CB CBDG small business loan to my local bakery, Sally. Mm -hmm. um, this is a continuation of our very successful small business loan program that we have been managing through our CDBG entitlement monies. The request before you tonight is a request for a bakery in downtown to be located at 109 North Sur Sterling Street. Um, going to offer indoor outdoor seating and a variety, wide variety of baked goods. Also custom wedding cakes. Um, two owners um, have been doing this for some time as a hobby and turning it into a business. <coughs> the request before you is for a $25,000 loan and it would follow all the requirements of the small business loans that we've done in the past through the CDBG program. So I'll make the motion to enter into a $25,000 DCDBG loan agreement with Brent Simon and Kelly Simon, um, guaranteed by Susan Danner for the purpose of developing a new bakery in the Center Business District of Morgan. Second. I have the motion. We have a second. Discussion? When is it going to open? <laughs> Karen? All in favor say out there by the way they will have a uh, seating be able to go in and get a donut or a cupcake or whatever okay uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. aye opposed consideration of approval of a resolution establishing eligibility requirements for retiree health insurance for employees with a higher date of july 1 2012 or later sally mm -hmm. um the personnel ordinance of the city is is adopted by you all but managed by myself and the department heads. This, however, deals with a benefit and it is required that you take any action on benefits <coughs> that are extended to employees. There's no secrets here. The rising cost of health care, economic stress, governments, private employers, everyone is looking at their eligibility requirements for retirees that receive any kind of health insurance coverage. Currently, um, for those employees currently working for the city that's, that serve out their years of service and ultimately retire, the benefit is after 20 full years with the city, 100% of the employee's premium, less any contribution that you approve needs to be made today, that's $10 a month, is paid. From 10 years to, to between 10 and 20 years, 50% of that is paid. And below 10 years, there is no benefit that the city would pay for that. The proposed plan before you for your consideration tonight would apply to anyone hired July 1st, 2012 or later. Everyone else would stay under the current plan. And the proposal is for 25 full years or more, that would be 100% of the employee's premium less any monthly contribution that the city council would determine appropriate and then between 20 and 25 years at 24.99 years that would be a 75 percent premium less any monthly contribution that you may deem appropriate and then between 15 years and 19.99 that would be 50 percent so you would change, you would have to work for 15 years before you would earn any kind of benefit and those are years of service with the city not within the system. Okay, we'll make the motion to approve the resolution establishing requirements for retiree health insurance for employees with a higher date of July the 1st, 2012 or later. Second. Okay, we have a motion, we have a second. And it's complicated, so if you have any questions, guys, you have the time to ask if you. And again, this is only employees who will be hired July 1st forward. Everyone else would remain under the same set of rules that they were hired under. <clears throat> so, in effect, what this means is that you're going to have to work 15 years to be vested to get any amount covered by the city in your health insurance. That is correct. Right. And that doesn't include the people now that have been in for 15 no. years? No. 
They would continue earning it the 10 years and the 20 years under the current set of rules. How does that matter? Be only those uh, be affected uh, that are hired after July 1, 2012. Right. Exactly. A few weeks. Also, uh, we have a motion, we have a second. Any further discussions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, uh, Carolyn, thank you for sitting in for Kelly. Carolyn Richardson, right? Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, we have a, a new uh, city reporter. And Reynolds is your middle name? Yes. Tell us your, uh, come to the podium. Just, I'm not going to put you on the spot. I just mentioned your name and uh, you just left. Appalachian? Uh, my name Wake is Forest, Wake Forest. Wake Forest, yes, sir. Yeah. Um, my name is James Reynolds Hutchins. I go by Reynolds. Um, I'm actually the crime and course reporter, but Julie is incredibly busy. Okay. So I will be covering some of her city stuff for her. Very good. No further notice. It's nice to meet all of you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any, anything from any of the other council members? Sally? Aye. Okay. Uh, thank you all for being here at the special meeting. Meetings adjourned.